Praise the Lord. I just wanted to get into um, uh, what Deborah had done. Okay, so, um, okay, and, and Deborah, uh, she dwelt under the palm tree between Ramah and Beth, uh, Bethel in Mount Ephraim, and the children of Israel came up to, to her for judgment, and she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abinoam, one of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw towards Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali, and of the children of Zubalin? And I will draw unto thee to the river of Keshon, Caesarea. Now, the, the river is Keshon, but Caesarea is the man. He is the enemy. The captain, the captain of Jabin's army with his chariots and his multitude. And I will deliver him into thine hand. And Barak, now this is Barak, this is a man, said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. If thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. Does this man sound like he was being hempet? Or does this man sound like um, she was ruling over him? No, because he knew that she was a prophetess also, as well as a judge. She knew that even though she was a judge, the main thing here was she was a prophetess because she got a word from the Lord. And he wanted to hear the word of the Lord. So he said, if you don't go up, I will not go up. And this is what she says. I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. She was saying, uh, even though I go with you, the honor is not going to go to you. And the, um, uh, this is really an exciting part of this, this uh, story here. The honor is not going to go to him. But she says, for the Lord, you hear that? For the Lord, Jehovah, God, the Father, I am, shall sell Caesarea into the hand of a woman. Do you see that? Caesarea is the enemy. He is the enemy. The one that had more men than Barak. And she said, The Lord shall sell Caesarea into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Okay. So in this war, as I read this story, this war, it panned out that Barak did win the war. But Caesarea escaped. He escaped and ran, put his tail between his butt uh, or um, uh, between his legs and <laughs> ran. Excuse me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's what he did. He put his tail between his legs and he ran. Hallelujah. Because he was getting beat. His butt was getting beat. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And guess where Caesarea ran to? Hallelujah. Okay. Um, 
okay, let's go down uh, up to uh, uh, the verse 13. And Caesarea gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron and all the people that were with him from Herosheth of the Gentiles unto the river of Kishon. And Deborah said unto Barak, up, for this is the day on which the Lord hath delivered Caesarea into thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor, and ten thousand men after him. And the Lord discomfited Caesarea, and all his chariots. Means the Lord just kicked his butt. He probably told everybody, just stand still and praise me. And watch what I will do. He says sometimes stand still. And know that I am God. You will not have to fight in this battle. For the battle is not yours but mine. And so he told them to stand still. And the Lord, hallelujah, put Caesarea on the, on the run. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. And the Lord discomforted him and all his chariots and his host with the edge of the sword before Barak, so that Caesarea lighted down off his chariot and fled away. The man ran, like I said. And Barak pursued after the chariots and after the hosts of the Gentiles. And, um, but everybody was killed. By Barak. He won the battle. That was the battle that he won. But the biggest part of the battle was getting the, the, uh, the, the headman, the henchman of this battle. And he took off running. And guess where he ran? He ran into a woman's tent. He ran into a woman's tent. And um, and he probably looked at this woman and said, uh, well, she won't do anything. And he said, oh, boy, am I tired. I am so tired and hungry. That's what he's telling woman. And the woman's name is Jael. Hallelujah. And when he had turned in unto her into the tent, <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's look at uh, verse 18. And Jael went out to meet Caesarea and said unto him, Turn in, my Lord, turn in to me. Now, this woman had a husband also, but she was showing hospitality, so to speak. You know, it was kind of like a deceiving hospitality. Uh, turn in, my Lord, turn unto me, fear not. And when he had turned in unto her and to the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And he, and he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. Oh, she just cooed him. She just, uh, you know, lulled him into submission hallelujah of course he was tired too from running and fighting hallelujah okay and he said for I am thirsty and she opened a bottle of milk and gave him drink and covered him up again again he said unto her stand in the door of the tent and it shall be when any man doth come and inquire of thee and say, Is there any man here? Thou shalt say no. Trying to get her on his side. Trying to get her on her on his side. And Jael, Hibber's wife, Jael, that that's her name. Hibber, that's her husband. One man, one woman. Hibber's wife, guess what she did? She took a nail of the tent. Can you imagine a nail 
size a, a tent uh, or a tent size nail. It, it's it's to go into the ground and it's to hold a tent up. And they were huge. They were long and they were huge. Okay, so she took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground. For he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. Hallelujah. And Caesarea will be given into the hand of a woman. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's a lot of stories like this that I love telling. And also, I want you to remember Huldah. Huldah was a prophetess. And she was the wife of uh, one man. And she sat in the courts, in the college. She sat where you think that men ought to sit. And not women. Huldah was a prophetess, and guess what? You'll find her in the Chronicles. King, there was a king there. And there were some scribes, there were some priests, um, there was uh, men uh, that had position, high positions in the king's house. You know, these were important men. There was about five important men that was doing some work in a church and they found a book that Moses had hid. And when they found the book, they, uh, uh, one of the kings, let me see if I can find that. I should be able to find that because uh, that's no good story. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I think that's in Second Chronicles. Hallelujah. I should have had that marked. You know, I had uh, colored uh, pens to mark everything. Hallelujah. And if I can't find it, I can still tell you the story. Oh, okay, here we go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No, that's not it either. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm taking up a lot of time. I didn't want to take up a lot of time. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm just going to tell you about Hoda, who was a prophetess. And, okay, so I was telling you that the king, or... I'll call him a bishop. He found the book that Moses had wrote. And and um, when they took it to the king, it was read to the king. And he rent his clothes. You know, because of what he read. He didn't know that he was breaking God's law. He didn't know that he was in the transgression breaking the law and he was always wondering why was things happening to him in the country and it was because he was breaking the law of the land 
that God had set for the uh, for them. But then he had rent his clothes and he was very sorry for what he had done. So he um, sent at least four or five men. He said, I want you to go to Hulda. Go to the prophetess. He said, uh, and um, go there and uh, ask her what should we do. What what can we do? And so, as the um, the scribe, a priest, and um, and uh, some um, uh, other workers that he had hired that was in the king's house. These were important men. He sent them to a woman and said, go and, uh, and ask her what are we going to do? What should we, what should be done? Because we didn't know about this book. And so Hulda prophesied what God was saying. Okay, so even if it is prophecy, it is still the word of God. I mean, I don't know how you all can get over that. How can you get around that? It is still the word of God. If it's prophecy, it's coming from God. And it's being given to a woman. And she is going to speak the words that God is sending forth. How can you get around that? And I'm thinking that a woman had already come past a man. Hallelujah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, um, the thing, the thing here is that the king, you would have thought that God would have used the king. God didn't use the king. You would have thought that God would have gave the word to the priest. God didn't give it to the priest. Or you, you would think that God would have given it to Hulda's uh, husband. God didn't give it to him. As a matter of fact, he was the keeper of the king's wardrobe. Of the king's wardrobe. So, God didn't give the word to any of those men. God gave it to a woman. It was the word. Whether prophecy... It's by the same Spirit. Hallelujah. I don't know how you can get around that. And then I want you to, to remember, look at Esther. Look at Ruth. The book of Ruth. The book of Esther. Look at Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary Magdalene, out of whom... Seven spirits were cast out. Then there was, there was Joanna. Look at Phoebe. Look at all these women. So I still don't know how you all could get around that God doesn't use women. It's ludicrous. Well, praise the Lord. I just wanted to give you, you know, just a little, well, it's not a little really, it's a whole lot, on let lying dogs sleep.
Thank you, Jesus. Or a woman shall compass a man. Thank you, Lord. You be blessed and highly favored of the Lord as I also am blessed and highly favored of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.